Good morning, Jadine from Mavstar Observatory. Um, what we're looking at is the first completed and working muon detector. You'll see the LED flash uh, every now and then. I think we're on about uh, three muons per minute, maybe a few more. Just interestingly, I've been uh, watching this for the last 10 minutes. I've reset it a couple of times. We do have like low periods where there's nothing and then sometimes you'll get like three or four flashes in one go. Um, I've had a lot of trouble uh, not just sourcing the parts for this, it's taken us nearly two months to get the first muon detector up and running. And yesterday, uh, you know, despite being promised by, uh, you know, suppliers that they would get this thing to me, uh, they did eventually uh, deliver on their promise. And the final component that, that I was waiting for, I mean, if you see the rest of this room at the moment, there is electronic stuff all over the place. But, um, you know, we was waiting for a 226K ohms resistor to finish the DCD uh, booster circuit on the back of this uh, but while I was waiting for that I was told it'd be around about 1.30, 2 o'clock on the afternoon so I got the LED as you can see all fitted up and and then even when I put the uh, final components on and I switched it on uh, nothing happened uh, you know I thought it might have been to do with the program so I adjusted the triggering voltage no good um, you know and then spent uh, the last eight hours I mean it's seven o'clock in the morning now I did get a bit of sleep last night but I, I you know I just could not sleep because this has been now uh, um, you know I've been living this day and night now for the last two months and enough was enough I had to you know make sure at least one of these was finished uh, you know before I'd done another upload at least you know because uh, I'd made a promise to you guys that this would be finished last week well as you can see it's working uh, we've got it finished now, we've got at least one of these muon detectors working and uh, we'll be um, you know, just doing some tests with it over the next few days and um, <clears throat> just fine tuning it but uh, there was a lot of work involved guys, I've got to say that uh, you know, and to get it to this stage, MIT had done a lot of work on this as well I mean what we've got is something that is now uh, detecting subatomic particles, muons and the reason why we're getting these muons uh, enter our atmosphere is because of the collisions above our atmosphere with cosmic radiation striking the atoms as it comes into our atmosphere and then smashing it into smaller subatomic particles and that's how we get muons, electrons, you know, and all the other um, glorious subatomic particles as a result of cosmic ray collisions. But now we've got, you know, a means to detect them. You know, it's like I said, uh, you know, we're using uh, the same photomultipliers that NASA use, um, the ESA use, and, you know, the Ice Cube Observatory down in the Antarctic. You know, we're all using the same uh, silicon photomultipliers uh, to detect these particles. Uh, I'll just give you a close-up of the screen, if I can, so you can see how many counts we've had over the uh, period of time that it's been running. So we've had 52 over 12 minutes. So you just divide the count over the time and it gives you an average of over a many minutes. Um, you know, we're getting muons coming uh, to the detector. It's quite a piece of work, I've got to say that, guys, what we've got here. Uh, first of all, the uh, silicon photomultiplier is state-of-the-art technology. Um, you know, we've got probably... 5 volts being converted on the PCB board into 29.9 uh, volts and that runs the uh, silicon photomultiplier and uh, they, they work on like a avalanche effect so when it detects a very very faint piece of light going through the scintillator crystal uh, that then converts it through the um, photomultiplier into a very weak signal, uh, the DC-DC booster circuit increases the voltage so that the Arduino on board the PCB can pick up the signal but uh, because of the clock speed 
or the processor speed on the Arduino is very slow, uh, there's another part of the circuit tree on the PCB board that allows it to hold the signal for a small duration of time which gives the uh, CPU on the Arduino a little bit of uh, catch up time so that it can then detect it as a strike and um, you know it puts it then onto the LCD screen. I've got to say um, <clears throat> first of all MIT did do, did do a good job and it's, it's great that they put it out as an open source but I know that they would have been <clears throat> questioning the same things I'm, I'm now questioning with this because you can either have the OLED working which is the LED screen that you can see there or the OLED screen working or uh, you have to sacrifice the screen and have a um, SD card now if you're collecting data over a long period of time I think it's uh, better to have an SD card as opposed to the LED. The LED is a great looking thing but you can't have two and that's because the memory uh, is very limited on the Arduino. So you know what I would have done is probably done a Mark II version of this using something with a bit more memory and therefore you could have uh, incorporated the OLED and the um, you know the SD card. It's very difficult, uh, you, you know, when you're trying to squeeze in a lot um, with the memory. I mean, well, at the moment, this has got an onboard temperature sensor. Even though it's not showing us the temperature sensor reading on the screen, if you put the SD card in there, it would have a date-time stamp for every muon that it detected, as well as, um, you know, a temperature reading. So, you know it just allows you to iron out some of them uh, uncertainties. I had a very similar problem um, I mean I did build uh, the Trimag from scratch I didn't just build it and design it I actually um, programmed it all myself as well so you can imagine the amount of work that went into that for just one person I mean this would have been at MIT um, you know a large group of people involved uh, you'd have had probably people that designed the PCB, the silk screen on the PCB. Uh, you'd have had electronic engineers, and they would have been, you know, I mean, it, they're not going to be, um, uh, you know, uh, amateurs at MIT. You're going to expect a certain calibre of people working for MIT, and you know, you're going to have experts in their own fields. But when I built the uh, Trimag. I went for a, not even an easy version, I went for quite a difficult version and you know again we've got a limited amount of capacity with memory so the program's got to be very lean uh, but the problem is with the Trimag it's transmitting wirelessly over, over, only over a short space of distance but you know it's capable according to the um, you know the uh, transceivers that I use up to a kilometre but nevertheless you know um, you know, it not only transmits the data that it collects from the sensor, but it also logs it, as you know, at the other end. And to do that, I had to use um, two uh, separate Arduinos, one for the receiver and the recording of the data, and the other one uh, on the Trimag system was to capture the data and transmit it to the master. So <clears throat> a lot of work goes into these things, and it's, you know, when we're just watching it here working, uh, the LED flashes and it gets another, you know, gives us another count over the period of time. It's very easy to take it all for granted, but you know, a lot of work goes into building all these things. I'll just show you around the PCB. Uh, I know the light levels are very low. Let me see if I can just um, increase the light in here. So I'll just quickly show you around the completed uh, muon detector. So we've got the OLED on the front there, we've got the scintillator which has been wrapped in electrical tape, that's to keep all the light out. Uh, beneath that is foil, again to keep the light out. You can see the Arduino there with its light on. And then round the back we've got the uh, BNC connector I think, that's just for plugging it into an oscilloscope. We've got the uh, three millimeter jack there so that we can link two of these together. Uh, have one running as a master, one as a slave. You can see the reset button. And just under the block there, you can see 
the little temperature sensor just in between there with the three prongs on it. But it's like I said, guys, you know, we had to, uh, in building this, we had to, you know, uh, put around 50 different components, probably more, uh, all accurately uh, together. They had to be the right values. So in toll, if this had been like, um, what we're running out at the moment, let's just have a little look. 66 counts over 18 minutes. So yeah, like I'm saying, um, let me just drop the light off because it's a little bit easier to see with the light off. Give me two seconds. So like I'm saying, you know, it was very much like an exam. Uh, it had to be got right first time. Uh, there's no room for errors and, you know, uh, we had a couple on this building it yesterday even after I put the last uh, resistor on board the PCB that we've been waiting for we still never had no voltage going to the um, uh, photo multiplier uh, so I you know put it under the microscope it looked uh, the booster on the DC DC booster uh, circuit looked like it was all perfect but you know I just got the soldering iron hot again and just touched it on all six of the legs very 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 tiny I mean I showed you in a previous video and um, you know I then got the multimeter tested it and we was getting the 29.9 volts that would require to run the uh, board so yeah guys you know um, finally you know we got there uh, we've got our first muon detector up and running now uh, all that's left is to find an appropriate uh, box to put it in and get the others built. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to do this video more than anything, just to, you know, as a, it's it's a relief, it really is, uh, that we've got our own muon detectors now at the observatory. And not only that, it's working and we've just got to replicate it. So, you know, a lot of hard work's gone into this point. And you know it's required a lot of dedication. It really has, and you know um, we got there in the end, didn't we? But there is a book, guys. You know the, these things aren't cheap to build. Uh, just the photo multiplier on its own is around about eighty pounds, and you know we've got another nineteen of these to build. Then we've got to get them out to the locations at different points around the world. <clears throat> and um, you know we can then begin collecting the data but it's going to require you know a bit of support from you guys a bit of help in order to do that but you know why we're doing it uh, you know at the moment we're in a grand solar minimum you know our planet is going for a magnetic reversal and on all accounts cosmic radiation and muons down here on the ground and the surface are going to be on the increase and you know we just want to know at what rate they are on the increase because every time you see that LED flash that is a high speed particle that is flying by and it's just by a stroke of luck that when it goes through our bodies you know it doesn't uh, uh, disentangle the um, DNA within the cells and, and cause damage and in turn cause a cancer but we know that that is exactly what happens uh, with uh, overdosage of cosmic radiation or you know this sort of radiation so we want to know exactly uh, where we stand how dangerous is it if dangerous at all you know are the levels acceptable and uh, you know the only way we can find out answers to those questions is by building more of these devices and getting them out there in the field so I'm not going to rackle on anymore guys you know it's just a relief uh, to actually get one of these finished now we've got there and uh, you know I just wanted to do the next video showing you that it was running and you know here we are if you want to help support the observatory and what we do here and you know I'll just say the links are down there if you want to you can help us on PayPal or Patreon and um, you know it's not mandatory of course but you know we can't get these things built without the money and I'm certainly not rich um, so I can't afford to do it all on my own, you know, if I can get a bit of support from you guys, you know, we can all, as a, you know, a joint effort, do this. So, links are down there if you want to support, and uh, I'm going to shoot off to bed and get some sleep, so uh, I'll say what I usually do, guys. You have a great week, I'll catch up with you 
at some point and uh, you know we'll be back with more reports on the muon detectors as well as data from the TriMag magnetosphere and obviously our global magnetometers that are out in the field already so bye for now